Well, I don't know about you, but when I spend my disposable income on material things, not like entertaining or travel, but things that I'm actually going to use, I want to make sure that they are things, and I find this much more frequently, that just make my life easier. So I want to share some of these with you today. Some of these are oldies but goodies I've used for years, but some of them are brand new to me. Now, Stuart, you mm -hmm. might remember this. Do you remember, and by the way, these are not sponsored products. These are just things that I have discovered as I, as I try to make my life a little bit easier to navigate. But Stuart, do you remember this bucket? Of course This I do. Centurion bucket? Mm -hmm. Okay, so last year I did um, some sponsored videos for some Centurion products, and this was one of them. And I loved it. I showed how I used it out in the garden. Um, I showed how when you're like going on a say a road trip or something and you needed water for your dog you could take this collapsible bucket with you okay how easy was that so i just <laughs> i love that i love that's very satisfying to squish it like that so i love it so it's not only small and portable when you're on the road and you're camping or things like that but as i discovered as i'm trying to set up the cottage it really because it squishes like this it stores so easily underneath my sink. Now, why do I like that? Well, obviously it's easy for me to find. It doesn't take up a lot of space, but why I also really, really like it is because, Stuart, if you will show them the corner of my kitchen island right there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry. This corner, there are four corners after all. It's true. This corner right here, you will notice that it is devoid of any flowers. 99.9% oh, .9 of the time, I have a huge bouquet there. I have a huge um, arrangement of flowers or a live plant or something. It's kind of one of my home signature touches. But right now, I am in the process of switching out one arrangement for another, so I don't have anything there. What I'm gonna to have to do then is go either cut a big bouquet or I'm gonna to have to go to Trader Joe's. I'm gonna to have to go to one of my flower sources. And when I do, I bring those all home to my kitchen sink and I hydrate them and condition them. And how do I do that seamlessly and easily? I just, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm doing one of those as seen on TV commercials. But I just pull this bucket out from underneath the sink and then I can fill it with water. I can use those floral food packets that always come with the bouquet of flowers. I can put them in here. They can condition in the sink. I've got it right here. I can then style them in whatever large vase that I want to put at the corner of the island. And then when I'm finished, I just take the water outside, dump it in the garden, squish this back up and stick it back underneath my sink. Now I couldn't do that with a metal floral bucket with any other kind of hard bucket that did not um, deflate like that. So this is an oldie but goodie, Stuart, that we are revisiting. I, I, like I, I just love it. And it came in different colors as I remember. I think I gave one to my sister-in-law. But this one is green. And since I am talking about green coordinated products, because whenever I can coordinate my products, I kind of like that. I, I, I just like the harmony of that. So this is one of those. Now I'm really going to feel like as seen on TV. So, oh, wow, yep. yeah, I, <laughs> I am one of those that a lot of times I don't cook simply because I'm lazy. And even though sometimes if I have the time, I find cutting and chopping and dicing and all of that kind of meditative when I'm cooking, most of the time, I hate to say this, but I'm kind of in a hurry and I just want to get it done. And if, if I can, I want to do it ahead of time. So when Johnny, my son Johnny was home this weekend, I pulled out this new product that I got and it's a fuelless star and it is a, a dicer, a chopper, a, a vegetable blader. It does all sorts of miraculous things. Basically, I just want it to cut up my onions because I don't like my hands to get all oniony, oniony smelly and it just makes more of a mess. Okay, so having used all of those technical terms, here's what I like about it. And part of this is one of those kind of no-brainer things. I just think, Linda, sometimes your common sense doesn't kick in. But fortunately, and I love this, 
my deceased mother-in-law came to the rescue because I remembered something that she had done in her kitchen long ago. She, it was when she was, art, she already, already was kind of arthritic in her hands, didn't have a lot of arm strength. She just had shoulder surgery and she had one of these. And what she did, and I'm not gonna demonstrate because I'm not gonna cook this afternoon, but she put her onion in here and then when you try to press it down, it's really hard. It takes a good deal of strength and, it's, and it takes a good deal of time and you feel like you're just kind of squishing them instead of chopping them until I remembered what she did. I just put it on the floor. <laughs> here, I yeah, don't know, Stuart, here, can, can, okay. So I just put it on the floor and you just step on it with your foot. <laughs> So your full body weight goes on it. Consequently, that onion is chopped just like that. I don't have to struggle and press and all of that kind of thing. It is done in short order. I'm done and I can do, I don't know how many onions I can do at one time. And then I just take all of those onions and I put them in little baggies and I can put them in the freezer. And I know this sounds like, like an infomercial, but I tell you, this made my life so much easier. So I am going to start cooking root vegetables, potatoes, things that I just don't like to chop very much a lot more frequently because I can just use this little handy dandy device. So that is my number two. Stuart, have I convinced you? Well, I'm just curious if you have to have the slippers to make it work. Uh, the, you mean my sandals? Your sandals yeah, yeah, you do. You have to have you have to have uh, dicing approved footwear. <laughs> what I also love about it is because I'm lazy, and so many of these things are because I am lazy. I just take it apart and I just put it in the dishwasher. And if it still has some residual moisture on it or whatever when I'm finished, then I just kind of set it out to dry. So Hubs, that that little sound you hear is Hubs coming and going. He is going to the lake. So there you go. It is easy. Most importantly, though, it just makes my life easier. And when I remembered my mother-in-law doing that foot trick, um, well, let's just say it made operator, um, operator error not so much of a problem when I learned how to use it. Okay, this is another, I, would, I don't know that this is a necessary thing, but it's a fun thing. And it is Hope's Perfect Sink. I don't know if I've showed you this guys before. It clean shines and protects, but I have a stainless steel sink. And even though I clean it and all that, and I wipe it down so there's not water droplets, periodically as a treat to myself, I just really like to have a gleaming kitchen sink. And so after you clean it with your barkeeper's friend or whatever it is you use, you just put a layer of this on it and then you wipe it off and your sink really sparkles. And I would show you my sparkling sink, but it's filled with <laughs> things right now. But it's great on stainless steel, cast iron, cor corian, corian. How do you pronounce that? I don't know. Man, we're asking the wrong guy. Anyhow, it restores its light new shine. And I just, I, I don't know. It's just one of those kind of little things that I think is a secret of adulthood that you know about getting your kitchen clean, clean and spotless and without leaving those kind of water spots. So if you're wanting to impress someone, a new daughter-in-law <laughs> or anyone or a new mother-in-law, then this stuff is really, really good. I've got a couple more products, but I want to show you those outside. I want to introduce you to my new friend, Leah. I know we share a taste in books along with other yes. things, including fashion. So yes. today we're going to do a, a, a new thing called twinning. Do you want to explain what that is? Yeah, basically we were just talking about there's so many items that Linda can style, that I can style differently, but with our own taste. So we're going to start Kind of trying that out. And yeah, we're just going to pick yeah. some random products, random random outfits. Obviously, Leah is considerably younger than moi, um, but nevertheless, I th I think sometimes our styles can overlap and yeah, sometimes obviously. not. <laughs> so we're going to try. We're going to shake it up a little bit, and today we're going to start with 
I've, I can't remember when I've worn a pair of shoes that were so commented on before. And in previous videos, you guys asked me a lot about them, so I thought we would address them today and how we would style them. And Leah, I put them in the category of what I call they're so ugly, they're cute. Yes, I love. <laughs> okay, so let me introduce you to my latest comfortable footwear. You guys know that I asked you for your suggestions on different kinds of sandals and footwear that I can walk in since I'm really living the walking life here in my new neighborhood. And I found these, this was not a recommended pair by you. This was actually recommended, I think, by my daughter-in-law. And these are Ugg sandals. Now, you may be thinking, okay, Linda, pay attention to details. Why do you have just an ugly brown box behind you <laughs> as the backdrop? Because I'm so excited. This is part two, <laughs> box two of my garden shed. Box one, equally as large, was already in the back and this just arrived. So I wanted to remember to show you guys about it. Okay, so I digress. Let me show you my shoes. Okay, so I've got them on with, with this ensemble and I'm trying to not show you my back toe because I have a big owie. Um, but this is, my, this is my ensemble for today and I'm just wearing them with some straight leg pastel colored ankle length Banana Republic jeans. Okay, I like the silhouette of being kind of slender on top and kind of trim on top. And then the contrast of kind of the chunky footwear. These are waterproof, they are weatherproof, they are Uggs, so we know that they are probably imminently comfortable. They're easy on and off, they have an elastic strap. And I just think they're kind of fun. And more importantly, you guys need to check it out. They come in so many different fun colors. I really like them in white, but for me, that would not be very practical because everything I wear gets mucked up in the garden. Okay, so this is how I have them styled. This is my little ensemble. Okay, now Leah, you show me how you have styled yours. Okay, so Linda had hers with a more fitted leg. I decided to pair mine with a more wide leg. Very in style right now. I get so many compliments on these pants as well. They're from a British brand called LF Markey. Um, but I love doing a monochrome outfit with a pop of color in my shoes as well. Um, Linda had on the perfect red belt though, which is so cute. <laughs> so, and I like, I like the summer look with a summery blouse and then a little pop of color. These are so comfortable. Aren't they? Yeah. I love that monochromatic look yes, too, with just a do. pop of color yes. and just your easy shades. Yes, some and sunglasses. We love yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And not a lot of, you know, it's easy, it's summer living. So yes. not a lot of accessories, not a lot of those kind of things. I think you just look absolutely adorable. Thank you. And so we both give a thumbs up. Yes, to we love these. The and the hair yeah, matches. We do. Yeah, we're well, definitely twinning. Yeah, we are definitely <laughs> twinning. We didn't know. We did not plan it. Um, so let us know how you guys would wear these sandals. I promise you, they are like walking on air. Yes. And if you liked this little twinning episode, then you might like some of the outfits of the past week. Not outfit of the day, but outfits of the past week getting yes. ready to come up. Well, this is a new segment and I'm calling it Grace Notes. And these are just little, just little bits of graciousness that we can easily and usually very inexpensively incorporate into our daily lives. But I really think they enhance our quality of life and certainly they enhance the beauty of our lives and also sharing our lives with others. I also love it when I get one idea and it begets another idea and that begets another idea. So this little cascade of epiphanies kind of started out this way. So I think I shared with you in a video a long time ago how much I loved the color of this wine. It is a Spanish wine, a Vino Verde. I got it at Trader Joe's. It was, I don't know, around $6, I think, Stuart. Um, and it is crisp and it is delicious. And again, it is 
inexpensive. However, because I'm visually driven, what compelled me to buy it originally was because I loved this color of green and I really love the color of green with blue. So I bought this bottle of wine, the wine was good, and I thought, oh, I love this bottle so much that I want to buy multiple bottles of this wine so that I can have the wine bottles take off the labels and I can store them in my refrigerator with water, because I don't like to use bottled water, um, but with cool water directly from the refrigerator, in some cases maybe iced tea or something else I'm going to show you today, which is so easy and so delicious, and that is jasmine tea. So I had a meeting at Elemental Coffee, one of my favorite coffee shops in, um, within walking distance of my home. A shout out to Helena who works there. I hope your knee is getting better, Helena. And I had some jasmine tea and I loved it. So I just asked them if they sold the tea itself on a retail basis and they did. And this is Elemental's Jasmine Green Tea and it is just divine. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna start doing that at home. Then I realized that maybe jasmine tea might be a little bit strong for some people. So I thought I'm going to make jasmine water to serve to my guests and for me, of course, me and hubs, but also to just serve it on the social patio. And I mean, how pretty is this where you just have your tea service and you can serve iced tea no time at all and you can serve this on your social patio and somebody asked me why do I call it a social patio and I loved this comment because she said isn't that redundant that I like words so why call it a social <laughs> patio well first of all I like the phrase I like what it intimates I love the way it sounds a social patio versus a patio which to me just sounds a little bit more suburban Stuart a little bit um, yeah. pedestrian. I like the, con the, the construct of a social patio where people just come up, up to the cottage on the hill to socialize with me. But I digress, so back to my jasmine water. So this is so easy. This is another thing that just made me so happy. So I realized that I could make it in my French press without, um, which I think is also just kind of fun to use very easily. And I love the fact that all of the measurements just lined up beautifully. It does not take much for me to get excited. So I have this trio of white pitchers that I have on my counter at all times. Usually I'm watering house plants or just doing different things with them. But I realized that this container holds the exact equivalent of my French press, which is about 28 ounces. So to make my jasmine water, and again, you do this the way you do you. For me, I just like it, um, I just like it not real strong. Just a hint of jasmine, if you will. Oh my gosh, it smells divine. I, this would make a great hostess gift. Leah, wouldn't this make a great hostess gift if you were staying with someone? So, and, and the measurements are on here, but I have found that I like to use, and when I say teaspoon, I just use a regular teaspoon, about a teaspoon and a half. And try not to spill it and waste it on your countertop. Okay. Then I put my water, which I have heated in the microwave for about three minutes. It is not boiling, it's just hot. Stuart, can you see that steam? Uh, yes. Coming up? Yep. Perfectly fills the container. If you don't believe me, Stuart, look. See how it comes up just to the line? Yep. Like I say, simple pleasures. Then I just take the plunger. I put it in place, but I'm not going to plunge it yet. I am going to tell Alexa, set the timer for three minutes. Uh, 
I don't need that right now, Alexa, but thank you for asking. So I'm gonna leave this here for three minutes to let it steep. Now, obviously, if I want it stronger, I can leave it longer, but typically, I am uh, when I make this, and I try to make it in multiple batches, so back to my wine bottles, I can keep four of these in my refrigerator pretty easily, one that has wine in it, <laughs> one that just has water in it, and then two, I typically keep with some kind of jasmine or mint tea. Now I could still use this diffuser uh, method if I wanted to use it with fresh herbs or dried herbs from my garden, if I wanted to make like lemon tea, lemon water, blueberry tea, anything that I wanted to infuse in the water, I could do that. And if it's stronger, I call it tea. If it's not, I just think of it as water. And I, I think it would be fun to play with some really, some really different herbs, maybe lavender, um, just lemon balm. I think that would be really fun as part of your garden inspired lifestyle, whatever you, whatever you could cut and clip from outside. It might also be fun to do something a little bit more savory. And I don't know if like basil water or rosemary water, maybe you could infuse that with some cucumber and that might be really refreshing. I don't know. It might be something fun to try. So I did take all of the labels off of this. And by the way, to do this, I keep just a plastic wash tub in the back and I just soak them for a few hours and the labels come right off. And then even when they're empty, I typically, I wash them periodically, but I keep them in the refrigerator so that the bottles are cold at all time. Because to me, that is part of the, the luxury of it is you just pull these cold, these ice cold bottles out of the refrigerator to either take a draught yourself or to serve your guests. So I think that's fun. Now, as I said, one idea begat another idea begat another idea. And I decided that because of two different things. One, I loved this wine so much, it was so refreshing. And also because I met a new friend in the neighborhood, Joanna, and she is a sommelier. So if you watched last Sunday's show, and if you didn't go back and watch it, we decided to do a wine tasting selection to select our summer house wine here at the cottage last weekend. It was so much fun. And by the way, in the community tab or right here, I will put up a list of all the suggestions. We tried to be really cost conscious. Most of these are things that you could get at Trader Joe's, you could get at your local, um, your local wine shop. Thank you, Alexa, off. You could get them at your local wine shop. You could get them just about anywhere, but they're... Alexa, stop. Thank you. Gotcha. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard not to be brusque with Alaska, Alexa. So I've got the wine list here. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> okay, here's another question of the day. <laughs> Do you guys suffer this same frustration when you're trying to be hip, you're trying to use the technology, and then all of a sudden you realize that it's just, all it has contributed to your life is a little bit more embarrassment. <laughs> but on with our wine list. So these are selections here. I will reveal what the, the most favorite ones were, but uh, let me just start out by saying that this was one of the favorites, which I just found ironic since I had discovered it earlier in the year simply because I loved that color of green. So sometimes it shows that superficial observations are not necessarily a bad thing. So I keep a bottle of this and I have selected this to be my house summer white wine and I have bottles of it at all time for people at all times for people who come to visit. I think it's good enough to cook with if I want to. And then the other bottle of wine that we selected, I'll probably reveal next week. It was a sparkling wine, but hint, it came in an absolutely beautiful bottle. I have to say none of them uh, none of them were bombs. Everybody pretty much liked everything and they liked them more as the night <laughs> as the night continued. So if you're looking for some really inexpensive wines, there, there is your list. Okay, so I have steeped this now for three minutes, three plus minutes. And now the fun part, 
I'm just going to compress to it. Let's do a close up of this because this is so fun. Go for it. And then all of those grounds are at the bottom. I'm going to let it sit for just a minute. And then I get my bottles ready. Now I want to make sure that there's not too much of a differential between how cold my bottle is and how warm this is because I don't want the bottle to crack. But remember, I didn't heat this to boiling. It was just below boiling. And now that it sat for a while, it's just a little bit warmer than room temperature. So now I'm going to decant it into this bottle. And again, please note the measurements. If you didn't have to go to the bathroom before. You have to go. <laughs> Pretty cool though. Look at that, just a tiny bit left that typically goes right into my iced tea glass. It does help to have a funnel. You can do it without it, but sometimes I am not always as exacting as I like to be. And then I just, screw the top back on. I put it in my refrigerator. And when guests come, I can serve them. I think it is a delicious, a low cost, but very gracious note for my home. Well, here is my question of the day, and it's going to be an enduring one every time we do this Signature Style Saturday, and that is, what are you reading? I come from a huge family of readers, my extended family, my immediate family. We like to read all different kinds of things, and I wanna know what you're reading, so make sure to put it in the comments below to share with me and to share with all other, uh, all of, of the other gardeners here in this community, because it's not only important, I think, to keep you young in general, but it also, as Stuart often tells me, the brain is just a muscle and, and to exercise it is a good thing because when you get to be my age, you start worrying about very real things like Alzheimer's, dementia, um, or that we're just not quite as with it as we used to be. So consequently, I wanna share with you what I'm reading and you please share with all of us, with our community, what you're reading. And I typically, I read more than one book at a time. It seems like I normally have one nonfiction book going at a time um, along with a fiction book. And my two books that I've got going right now, this this is one I heard about recently. It's a number one New York Times bestseller, The Body Keeps the Score. I find it absolutely fascinating, particularly if you have gone through any kind of trauma in your life. It starts out talking about uh, veterans, PTSD, but it really it applies to any kind of trauma and how it almost is imprinted in our DNA and, and coping mechanisms for ways that we can deal Deal with some of our issues and mitigate some of the effects of whatever trauma we've suffered. So definitely I would recommend this one. I'll put links to all of these products below, but I, I really love this and I take notes on my books. I'm, you know, to me, particularly a paperback, I always have a highlighter by them and I make, I make notes of important quotations that I like or really key, key ideas that I want to share with, with others or just remember myself. Now this, the second book I'm reading is, I think it's just a fun thing. And I'm challenging you to do this. Uh, do this yourselves. Make sure to put the comments below. Hubs and I, we love books. And we got rid of so many when we moved to the cottage, but we still had a lot more of them. And I especially have a hard time getting rid of really beautiful old books. Um, and lately I've noticed in my own home, in friends' homes, on Pinterest, where books are being curated and they're being organized by color, since I'm getting more into blues, I really hand selected a lot of my beautiful blue books, blue tonal books from my library to kind of showcase in the parlor. Well, I decided, you know what? Books are to be read. They're not just to be um, idolized <laughs> and, and just use as kind of eye candy for your house. They are to be consumed. And I think sometimes we don't consume them because we take them for granted. And I decided that my old books, I don't wanna take you for granted anymore. 
So I decided to start reading periodically, pulling one of these old books off the shelf and just give them, you know, give them a try to see if they are still as compelling to me as they were to the generation in which they were originally printed. Um, or just to see, okay, why were these in my library to begin with? <laughs> besides just the fact that I liked its blue cover. So the first one that I'm start that I started out with was um, or is the glimpses of the moon I like the by Edith Wharton. I love Edith Wharton. I love, you know, obviously her gardens, but I also love her as a writer. And this is very, very intriguing. I'm not quite halfway finished with it, but I find it so fascinating, not only how these individual protagonists live their lives, but also the context and the times in which they live. And it gave me an appreciation for how much more liberated we are right now and how we can easily we have upward mobility, sadly, we have downward mobility too, but we have mobility within our own social settings. And in the past, that wasn't quite so true. So I find this one really, really fascinating. Please let me know if you're going to try this at home and select one of your old books to read. It gave me such delight this week when I had not mentioned this to my son, my son Johnny, who is, talk about an avid reader, I hadn't mentioned it to him at all, but in, um, in my parlor, I had some of those old books and he immediately pulled out Kim by Rudyard Kipling. <laughs> And he read it in the bathtub all week long. Um, so I think, it's, I think it's just a fun thing to try. Again, sometimes we have things around our homes and we take them for granted and we don't really appreciate them for what they are. Um, thirdly, this is fun, and Stuart accused me of being drawn to it because it looks so much like the cover of my <laughs> own book. Um, and yes, it does stylistically. This one is called Sunday Suppers. And I'm not really buying a bunch of new cookbooks. I don't cook enough probably to justify them. But this one, the description of it was so poetic. Pink deviled eggs. Yeah, the description of it was so poetic. The imagery it's was so fast. lush that I decided that I had to have it. And I'm, by golly, I am actually gonna cook out of it. Now that I have my new handy dandy dicer, <laughs> onion dicer, maybe I will be more compelled to do so. Gonna hold so, you to that. Yeah, so there you go. That is just <laughs> a little peek into my library for this week, what's in yours. Well, this is a new segment that I want to incorporate into Signature Touches Saturday or Signature Style Saturday. And it's really important to me and it's on the premise of, of what did I learn? What did I learn this past week? So it's Saturday, I'm reflecting back on the week past and I really want to be attentive to things that might make me more wise, a better person in the future. And I was at the funeral service of a friend of mine who had been in memory care, who suffered from dementia, and he was a wonderful, wonderful man. I'd known him for many years and the service was lovely. But one, one line, one sentence in particular really stood out to me. In fact, so much so that I wrote it um, on the, on the uh, memoriam that they handed out. And the line was, attention is a form of prayer. And it was, it was a line I was not previously familiar with. So I looked it up and it was really attributed to a French philosopher, Simone Weil, 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 I'm not sure how you pronounce it, um, but who really said that, that attention was a, a massive form of generosity and that it was, and truly when elevated to its highest was a form of prayer. And I just love that because I think so often in the busyness of our lives, we don't honor what is happening before us. And I want to make, uh, it's part of a meditation practice, I think it's part of a spiritual practice, it's part of a religious practice to really honor what is before us at any given point in time. And so I really took that to heart and I tried applying that premise to a number of different things. And I wanna give you one example because it gave me so much joy. 
Um, I was at Trader Joe's this week, or this past week, <laughs> and believe it or not, I do not live at Trader <laughs> Joe's, but a lot of life seems to unfold there. The tra <laughs> maybe it should be called Trader Joe's, Le Trader Joe's Lessons <laughs> in instead of things I learned this week. Um, but I ran into, I will say, not, not a friend, but an acquaintance. And she was looking at the flowers and I looked at her and I thought, oh my goodness, she looked, she looked very familiar. She was statuesque, just lovely. And I noticed she was taking as much care as I in selecting her flowers. And I looked at her and I said, I said, I know you. And she looked at me and she said, I know you. And I said, I am so sorry that I, I don't remember your name, partly because so often now I, I see people out of context. And, and she said, Linda, right? And I said, I said, yes. And she said, well, now I recognize you too. Long story short, and this was, again, this was such a touch of loveliness and a form of attention on her part that just kept cascading. So I no sooner got home than I had a, a message, um, a text message from her. And, and we had been in social situations in the past where she had my number. And she said, it was so lovely to run into you. And we really should get together soon. And I thought, oh, what a lovely thing for her to do to contact me. So I said, well, how about this weekend? I am having a wine tasting party on my social patio. It's mostly going to be with new neighbors, people that I don't know very well. So it would be fun to have a familiar face. And she quickly responded and said, I don't have anything going. I would love to come. So she came and then I re kind of remembered how, how I knew her. She remembered um, how she knew me and she came. And again, another just spot on note of graciousness. So when she arrived, she had a little hostess gift for me. You guys know I'm really big on hostess gifts. <laughs> so she had this little, I mean, I was just charmed. She had this little vase of herbs, fresh cut from her garden, which I have had all week. They were secured with a little blue and white ribbon. I just love that. She knows that I'm a big gardener, so I love the fact that that was personal. I also love the fact uh, that she didn't make the mistake that I made this week. I went over to someone's um, on Memorial Day for a wonderful Memorial Day dinner, and I made the mistake of, and I knew better, and I brought them a bouquet of fresh peonies. Now, they were gorgeous and she loved them, but she had to immediately stop what she was doing so she could find a vase and put them in the vase or I could have done it for her. But it would have been much more considerate had I already had them cut, had them in a vase and arranged so all she had to do was set them out, a la like my friend Katie. In addition, she also brought um, Moroccan amber, a nest candle, not a large one, but a small one. So it wasn't prohibitively expensive. Took, touched just the, the right uh, touchstone of not being too excessive, and, but being spot on. And of course it was wrapped just, just beautifully. Well, consequently, um, Katie, whom I'd kind of considered a friend, uh, uh, an acquaintance before, I now consider her a friend. And we will have many repeat visits, both in gatherings and individually, because I can tell she's gonna be a special person. So another grace note that she was so attentive to was she then wrote a thank you note to both myself and to hubs saying, but the best wines are the ones we drink with friends. So she took great care to just get the right note. And I thought as I was going through all of the things that happened this week, I wanted to be attentive to those kinds of acts of kindness and graciousness that so enhanced my life that I'm going to assume enhanced her quality of life in the gifting, in the composition and the thought behind the gifts. And it was just so lovely. And I thought truly attention is a form of prayer. So I'm gonna leave you with that. What I learned this week was to really do a deep dive, not a superficial look, 
but a real deep dive into being attentive to all sorts of wonderful things that are happening to you as time goes by. You guys have a great remaining weekend and I will see you next week on Signature Style Saturday.